From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Martin Scottman, Mr. Dollar, at Eastern Liability and Trust. Oh, yes, sir. Got your message. I was just about to call you back, Mr. Scottman. Would it be possible for you to drop in and see me today? I think so. Say in an hour. That would be excellent. What's it about, Mr. Scottman? David Perling. Perling. I understand he was killed in a boating accident a couple of days ago. Read something about it in the papers. To borrow a phrase, Mr. Dollar, that report was somewhat exaggerated. Mr. Perling is still very much alive. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Eastern Liability and Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut... The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Perling matter. Mr. Scantman, you're a pretty good guy, and I'll say this right at the top, since you were the one who called me in. You're reading about the Perling matter in your newspaper right now, but they haven't got the story right. None of them will ever have it quite right. Just remember that as you go through your newspaper in this report, Mr. Scantman. You looked pretty worried when I met you that afternoon about 5 o'clock, and you led me into the top drawer offices of Eastern Liability and Trust. I tagged you as a meticulous sort of man who knew when his laundry was coming back. I wasn't a bit surprised to learn that you were vice president and chairman of the board. Why don't you sit down there, Mr. Dollar? It's the best chair in the place. Thanks. Cigar? Cigarette? No, I have these. Thanks. Lighter right there to your right. Thanks. Yes, Mrs. Scarman? You can run along for tonight, Evelyn. No more to do. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, Evelyn. I, uh... I understand you've handled several matters for our company, Mr. Dollar. Yes, sir. I was just going over it in my mind. Uh, I believe the last one was the San Antonio case. Yes. Mark San Antonio. Yes, yes. You handled that very well, Mr. Dollar. I want you to know I appreciate your reputation in the field. Nice of you to mention it. I'm curious, Mr. Scottman. I rarely work directly with an insurance company. Usually I'm hired by the adjusting agency. And let's say this is a little idea on my own. Only one person knows about it so far. You will be the second. Board of directors might not exactly prove what I'm about to propose, but I feel some action should be taken. I have uh, some good whiskey in that cabinet. If no, you... thanks. No, no. Yes. Well, this case involves David Perling, who, despite what the newspapers reported yesterday, is still very much alive. You say you saw the item in the papers? Yes, something about uh, him being killed in a boating accident in Florida, I think. The story was erroneous. It'll be retracted. Oh? The fact of the matter is, Mr. Perling was already on his way back to New York, safe and sound, when that report came out. The boat that he'd been fishing from did have a boiler explosion, but no one was killed. Well, these things sometimes happen, I guess. Oh, sure they do. However, it was printed all over the country. As you know, David Perling is highly regarded in financial circles. And that is the reason I asked you to come in and talk to me. Did you uh, see the stock exchange figures yesterday? Well, uh, I don't pay too much attention to them, Mr. Scott. I do. Uh, we do, as an insurance company. That report of Perling's death affected several commodities listed on the New York Exchange, companies in which he holds varying positions, positions that would, uh, if, say, the report of his death were engineered for that specific purpose, allow certain people to risk very little money and make a great deal of money. Uh, just a minute, sir. Certain people? Are you talking about Perling? I don't know who I'm talking about, really. I'd like you to find that out. Find out, among other things, if the situation has been taken advantage of in any way. This isn't exactly in my line, Mr. Scottman. I think it is, Mr. Dollar. I'll come right out with it. Eastern liability has considerable investment in some of the commodities that could be affected. We, or let's put it this way, I want to know where we stand. I want to know if we've been cheated or are about to be cheated. I had dinner with Morton Scottman at his club. He acquainted me with the several companies involved in the matter and supplied me with stock exchange information that would be valuable in making comparisons in case the action he anticipated ever happened. An hour later, I was at the airport. Expense account item one, $123.69. Airfare and incidentals from Hartford to Key West, Florida. I arrived at 4 o'clock in the morning, found a hotel and had six hours sleep. 
At 11.30, I was standing in the office of a bluff, red-faced man named Peyton. He happened to be the managing editor of a newspaper. Yeah, all the, uh, all the way from Hartford, Connecticut, eh? Well, welcome to Key West. What can I do for you? Tell me about this story. Ah, a Perlin story, huh? Yeah. You a lawyer? No. You here to make trouble? Just find out something about how that story got into print, that's all. We're retracting today. What do you want us to do? Wear sackcloth and ashes? <laughs> well, I'm not here to file a suit. I just want some information about the story. You can sit down if you want to. All right, thanks. Just... Find Gracie Edwards, will you? Right. Well, about like the newspaper story, except for the mistake. That was a pretty good-sized mistake, Mr. Payton. Berlin was here for a week to ten days. He had an idea he could catch some tarpon or sailfish. He chartered a boat called the Yacht Watcher the day before yesterday. Just heading in for the landing, somehow the fuel ignited and she blew up. Everybody thought Perlin was still aboard her. Who was aboard her? Mr. Skibber. He came out of it all right. Harbor patrol boat picked him up. Mm-hmm. Go on. Everybody thought Perlin had been aboard as usual and was lost. The skipper wasn't in any shape to tell it differently then. After all, Perlin had been going out on her every day. We all knew that. Where was Perlin? He was sleeping in his room when all of this happened. Got up about 3 o'clock, checked out, took the train back to New York. Story came out in the evening edition. Your reporter, the one who wrote it up, I'd like to see him. It's a her. Well, how did she get the story? It was right there. Right where? What do you mean? Down at the sailfish landing when the yacht watcher come in. That a regular beat? Well, down this size, we don't have beats. But your reporter was there when the boat caught fire. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? Gracie Edwards. How long has she been a reporter? A couple of years, give or take a month. Hope you didn't come down here to run her over the cold. Oh, she's had enough of it, Dollar. For me... It's my job, not yours. Okay, okay. Where do you eat lunch around here? Bluefin Bar and Grill, about a half block down this side of the street. Dip beef and apple pie, if you like that kind of thing. Oh, hi, Gracie. Yeah, this is Johnny Dollar, Gracie Edwards. Hello, Mr. Dollar. Hi. Mr. Dollar's come all the way from Hartford to ask you some questions about the Perlin story, Gracie. You want to talk to him? Do I have to? Up to you, honey. Who are you? What do you want to know? I'm an insurance investigator. I want to know how the story got into print without being verified. Well, that's a straight enough answer. Um, who do you investigate your insurance for? Eastern Liability and Trust Company at the moment. Yeah, he's got business card and everything. Yeah, he looks like he might do that kind of work. Well, if you're going to talk to him, find someplace else. I've got work to do. How about some lunch, Miss Edwards? How about that? Oh, get out. Expense account item two, two dollars, two lunches for Gracie Edwards and myself at the Bluefin Bar and Grill. She was a short, stocky woman in her early 30s. She had a fresh-looking face and fiery red hair. She didn't strike me as the kind of reporter who'd make a bad mistake. I did it the way any cub would have, only worse. I had a three o'clock deadline. I wanted to make it. I could have waited till the skipper came to, said Perling wasn't aboard. I could have contacted Perling's hotel, found out he was safely there. I didn't do any of that. I just phoned in my story. You know the rest. Every wire service in the country picked it up. Guess I was lucky I wasn't fired. Mm-hmm. You want another glass of beer? Mm, no. No, thanks. You've been pretty nice. I'm sure you're not all insurance investigator. Notice I haven't asked you exactly what you're investigating. Yeah, I noticed that. You gonna tell me? Possibly. Right now, something worries me, uh... You were down at the landing when the boat caught fire? Yeah. You go down there often? It's more or less my beat. Oh? What? I didn't think a reporter'd have a beat in a town this size. I said more or less. I like to go down there in mid-afternoon when the boats are coming back. The water's blue and fresh. Usually a good offshore breeze blowing. Now, if they caught any big fish, the flags are up. It's a place to go. I'm romantic. Good. Suppose we go there. Hmm? 2.30 now. Ought to see some of those boats come in. <laughs> Expense account item three, one buck, one cab. Transporting myself and Gracie Edwards' reporter to Sailfish Landing, or as near as we could get. The last 500 yards, we had to walk on the planking between the slips. Now, uh, tell me, where was the out watcher when she blew up? Uh, over there. About there. Uh-huh. Where were you? Right here. 
I was sitting right there. Looking out to sea? Uh Uh-huh. How long had you been here? Oh, an hour or so. That was day before yesterday? Yes. She blew up there. You phoned in your story before 3 o'clock? Yeah, right before 3. Where's the yacht watcher now? They raised her this morning, towed her over the repair docks. That's around the point. That's kind of funny. What's funny? Well, I, I guess I didn't hear it right. You, you saw her get in trouble. You were right here. Then you went and phoned in your story. That's right. Where'd you phone it in? What? Last phone I saw was at the tavern before we came on the docks. High heels running over these slips. Take quite a while to get to it. I used a phone in town. How'd you get there? Cab. You had one waiting? Look, suppose I did. Suppose you didn't, Miss Edwards. Suppose you weren't even here. If you were, where's the sunburn? Every redhead on earth burns up in an hour when the sun's like this, unless you're an exception. I don't think I like this. I don't like it much myself. But I have to find out something. I'd like to find out from you. I hope I can. If I can't, I'll have to find out from someone else. Maybe the man who owned the boat, the man who ran it, someone around here. I'm going. Wait a minute. I'm not just throwing words around. The boat was probably insured, and it'll probably have a claim on it, and I'll probably know the adjuster who was sent to work the claim. I'll talk to him and tell him what I'm thinking. I'll find out about this one way or another, Miss Edwards, but I think you can help me. Now, you're a good reporter. You would have waited to see if Perling was aboard. You would have checked his hotel. You would have, in spite of a 3 o'clock deadline, you would have made sure he was or wasn't aboard that boat. All right, Miss Edwards. Did somebody pay you to file that story? I just want to know that. Somebody paid me, yes. Okay. I'll take you back now. We don't have to mention this again. Yeah, okay. In case it comes up, though... Yeah? Mr. Perling paid me. Paid me to print the story he was dead. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the affairs of Wall Street follow the current trend in cheating and mayhem. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for another exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>